Senior Plasma Physics, Lecture 7. When you disturb a plasma in some way, it will produce waves. So here, we look at the simplest possible plasma oscillating mode. In doing that, we'll introduce concepts such as the phase and group velocities. Then we look at basic plasma oscillations and the associated frequency of that oscillation. So, how do we mathematically represent waves? In plasma physics, there are two types of waves, electromagnetic and electrostatic. All plasma waves can be represented by some kind of sinusoidal function, uh, given in this form, where k is the wave number, which is 2 pi on the wavelength, and omega is the angular frequency, where f is the frequency. Notice that the periodic function that we've just given can be expanded in this form. As you can see, this is a periodic function, but in complex number notation. We keep it in the exponential form for mathematical convenience, as will become apparent in future lectures when we start to use this function. The amplitude E in this function can be either electric or magnetic field, depending on the situation. Let's define the phase velocity of a wave. To do that, recall the previous expression for the wave function. We can rewrite this function in terms of the angle theta, for simplicity. Now imagine a graphical representation of this wave function, and it is moving to the right with velocity v theta. Now imagine that we are standing on the top of the crest of that wave, and moving along in the same direction with the same velocity v theta. That means from our perspective, the phase angle theta of the wave doesn't change. So the rate of change of theta from our perspective is zero. Now substitute back the expression for theta and carry out this derivative. It simplifies to this. Rearranging this expression gives us the velocity of the wave in terms of omega and k. This velocity is known as the phase velocity. Whenever there is a superposition of many waves with various frequencies and velocities, such as this, which is really just a superposition of two waves, we assign a velocity to this bundle of waves known as the group velocity. In this case, we can look at it as the velocity of the envelope, Vg. But recall from the last slide that there is also a phase velocity of a wave, so the velocity of the individual crests in that envelope is called the phase velocity. And the group and phase velocities do not necessarily have to equal. It's possible to derive the group velocity of a superposition of waves, but the steps that need to be taken are a bit more involved than the derivation of the phase velocity. The end result is that the group velocity is defined as d omega dk. Now let's look at one of the most fundamental oscillation modes of a plasma. Imagine you had a group of ions and a group of electrons. Here the ions represented by red and the electrons represented by blue. If they are free charges, as they usually are in a plasma, then they'll move towards each other. But the ions are so much more massive than the electrons that it's the electrons that end up doing most of the moving. As the electrons are drawn to most of the ions, the chances of all those electrons being captured by the ions is very small. So most of the electrons will swing through to the other side. The electrons will eventually stop and be attracted to the ions again, and the whole process repeats. This oscillation frequency is known as the plasma frequency. Quite often, it's written in its angular form. In many textbooks, it's referred to as the plasma frequency, but the oscillation frequency is not really omega. We'll refer to it as the plasma angular frequency, where n naught is the plasma density, and m here is the electron mass. The derivation of the plasma frequency uses the fluid equations and the Poisson equation, which is given by this expression. We also assume that we're dealing with cold electrons, so their thermal energy, kT, is zero. Because the ions are so much more massive than the electrons, we assume that they are fixed in space. 